welcome again today we will discuss boron and aluminum based organic reagents so boron based reagents in organic synthesis reactions of organoborans asymmetric allyl boration allyl boron compounds with chiral auxiliaries first we will discuss an asymmetric allyl boration with ipc to b allyl also brown asymmetric cotyl boration we will discuss this is the cotyl group you can incorporate suzuki reaction also will discuss suzuki reaction variation also with nickel catalyst and amide coupling then we will discuss aluminum based reagents in organic synthesis introduction first we will discuss then structure and bonding ligand exchange in trialkyl aluminum compounds low valent organo aluminum compounds where the aluminum aluminum bond is there synthesis of organo aluminum from alkyl halides and aluminum hydro alumination carbo alumination also we will discuss and laboratory preparation from aluminum chloride we will see and reactions of organo aluminum also we will discuss reactions of alkynyl alanes alkynyl alanes methylation of enones uh, that is the conjugate addition also conjugate reduction also we will discuss and nickel catalyst conjugate reduction of alpha beta unsaturated ketones and miscellaneous examples so first we will discuss boron based reagents in organic synthesis and asymmetric allyl boration because from yesterday's class we saw different carbon bond formation here we will discuss the allyl boron compounds with chiral auxiliaries and first uh, chiral auxiliary was discovered by hobman in 1978 where this diol chiral diol that was reacted with the boronic acid derivative and this chiral auxiliary was incorporated into into the allyl system also brown came up with this pinene system and this is the very popular this is called ipc2 ipc2 b allyl so isopinocamphenyl boron allyl compounds and these are the powerful chiral auxiliary that we will see in the next slide also and this is the tartarate derivative tartarate derivative that incorporated in the allyl boron system and was employed by yamamoto and rausch also this chiral boron the cytosymmetric chiral boron was incorporated by massumone in 1987 and this is also an useful allyl lating reagent rausch came up with another moiety here the cyclic bis amide is there and this was incorporated in the allyl boronic acid system this also an useful allyl lating reagent and core came up with this uh, uh, entosyl 1 to diphenyl amine and this cytosymmetric this is also cytosymmetric this is also an useful allyl boron reagent so this is the most popular icpc to be allyl that was developed by brown and this is also commercially available and this reagent if you treat with aldehyde in pentane 5 degree centigrade for very short time 5 to 30 minutes after that if you treat with oxidation that is the h2oh minus treatment you get this alcohol secondary alcohol with the allyl motif and this reaction is quite general different aromatic as well as aliphatic you can see here phenyl gives 94% e and ortho bromo derivative gives 92% e and this is the aliphatic aldehyde derived product this is the secondary alcohol you get 92% e and this has many application in natural product synthesis for example nickel synthesis of epithyl loans asymmetric allyl boration is used in conjunction with tbs production and ozonolysis overall this provides a two carbon homologation sequence that delivers the required acetogenic sequence because this allyl motif this allyl motif you can easily clip with ozonolysis and you get the aldehyde so that's the two carbon homologation that's the uh, term is used here suppose if you have this keto aldehyde and if you treat this asymmetric allyl boration with this isopinocamphenyl boron and species allyl species then you get this asymmetric allylation 
and this product you get in high E. Here selectively this aldehyde is reacting. So, this is aldehyde, this is ketone and aldehyde is more reactive here. And after TBS protection, you get this uh, secondary alcohol protection and after that if you do the ozonolysis followed by reactive workup with dimethyl sulphide, you get this aldehyde. So, ultimately this is the 2 carbon homologation initially 3 carbon is uh, coming, but after ozonolysis you <coughs> remove 1 carbon and you get this 2 carbon homologation. Now, this aldehyde can be further used for the natural product. Brown's asymmetric cotyl boration, beta methyl homoallylic alcohol moiety of both anti and syn configuration is a characteristic structural element of a number of macrolides and polyther antibiotics. So, OH, ME like this system, this system is present in many macrolides and polyether antibiotics. Reaction of cotyl metal to butyne, butynyl metal reagents with carbonyl substance provide access to acyclic stereo and enanso selective synthesis of beta methyl homoallylic alcohols. The alkene moiety can be further elaborated into aldehydes by oxidative cleavage of the double bond leading to aldol type products that we have seen already. So, this is the homoallylic alcohol, beta methyl homoallylic alcohol, just we have written here, here also you can write like this beta methyl homoallylic alcohol, and this can be formed from aldehyde and then cotyl organometallic reagent. So, if a negative charge is here, then you can generate this and this organometallic reagent is possible that this similar compounds. So, this cotylation is possible from boronic acid derivative. This is called cotyl boronic esters and this is in the Z conformer and this is in the E conformer. Because they can react like this and you get the desired product beta methyl homoallylic alcohol that we will see. Brown's asymmetric cotyl boration. So, cotyl organometallics undergo 1 3 shifts to the metal at room temperature. So, this is also important there is a possibility of 1 3 shifts. For the stereo control use of allylic organometallic reagent in synthesis it is important that the stereo isomeric reagent not equilibrate under the reaction conditions and add to carbon oxygen double bond reduce selectively and irreversibly. So, what happens suppose if you have a trans this one then this can equilibrate and can give this and this can again equilibrate to the cis derivative. So, here it was E then this and then this. So, this equilibration is possible and then if this equilibration is fast and you get a mixture of the products. Of the various allyl organometallic reagents, allyl boronic esters and allyl dialkyl borens are specially suited for acyclic stereoselective synthesis of homoallylic alcohols. For allyl boronic ester, this equilibration will not occur, so that you can get the selectivity. So, here it is the story the rate of inconversion of cotyl boron reagents varies with the nature of the R groups on boron, cotyl dialkyl boron then cotyl alkyl borinate. So, when you put the OR group, then the B actually B on the OR group on the boron, then you get the most stable. So, cotyl boronate two OR group on the boron that is the most stable and equilibrium or equilibration, equilibration does not occur. So, that is why when this boronate esters are used, then this equilibration does not occur and you get high selectivity. So, here this is the equilibration. So, this is Z, Z goes to this the terminal olefin and now this can again equilibrate and it can go to E. So, if this equilibration is faster and equilibration occurring, then you do not get selectivity. Cotyl boronic esters to butanyl 
Boronates undergo nearly quantitative addition to aldehydes prepared by reaction of cotyl potassium reagents derived from cis or trans to butene with n butyl lithium and potassium tartbutyl oxide followed by addition of the trialkyl borates. So, this is the preparation. So, you start with here cis to butene and now you treat with n butyl lithium and potassium tartrate butoxide this is very strong base you get the CH 2 K here after that I alkyl borate you eliminate one KOR then you get this boronate ester. So, this is the Z similarly from the trans to butene you can get the E. So, this is the reaction is similar in butyl lithium potassium tartar butoxide you get this one and after that trialkyl borate reaction you get minus KOR and this is the E boronic ester. So, this is the allyl boronic esters and the usefulness here they do not equilibrate. They are thermally stable and isolable at room temperature. So, they do not equilibrate, they are stable and they does stereoselective addition to aldehydes that we will see now. Reaction of cotyl boronic esters with RCHO is regioselective, generating two new stereochemical relationships and potentially four possible stereoisomeric products. That there are two stereochemical aspects. Enanso selection that is re versus C phase addition and diastro selection syn versus anti. Suppose if you add Z cotyl boronate with RCHO followed by NOH H2O to treatment, you get syn homoallylic alcohols. So, with Z you get the syn, these two group are on the same side and here also same side, only they are enanosomeric relation. And with E cotyl boronate, also with RCHO NOH treatment you get now the anti. So, they are DLPR that we will see with chiral catalyst you get the only one enantiomer, but simple boronic ester give the diastro selective. So, here diastro selective addition And for this diastro selective addition, the uh, cyclic transition state 6 member is proposed, which tells that the reaction is highly diastro selective or pseudo selective. And Zimmerman Traxler transition state model has been proposed. Transfer of allyl moieties from boron to C double bond O carbon passes by rearrangement to form intermediate boronic ester C and D. Reaction is highly diastro selective. So, for E system, E cota E allyl or E cotyl boronate system, here methyl is in the equatorial position, equatorial position, and this is the E, you can see the double bond, and this R takes pseudo equatorial position. Also, in the cyclic transition state, you can see that the carbonyl group is activated by the boron. So, boron is acting as a Lewis acid. So, boron acting as Lewis acid and that is why no external Lewis acid catalyst is required. Simple boron is acting as a Lewis acid also the allyl group here that is the cotyl group will add. And because of this cyclic transition state after addition you get this intermediate C boronic acid C after that H 2 to NOH you get this anti alcohol. So, here in the zigzag you can see that this group this is the uh, we have written in the plane and now this methyl and O Br which is ultimately going to OH are in the trans. So, that is the anti. So, when E cotyl boronate is used you get the anti alcohol. And now Z cotyl boronate what will happen in the Z olefin this methyl and this substituent will be in the same side that is why methyl should be in the 
axial position and this again in pseudo equatorial so this does not change because this is the most stable position of r and now after addition you get this intermediate after h2 to n which you get the sin alcohol here again this is the we are writing in the plane this bonds and now this methyl and oh will be in the same side so you are getting the sin alcohol pure e and z and e cotyl diisopropyl caffeinyl borens can be prepared so now we are discussing the asymmetric variant can be prepared a low temperatures from z or e cotyl potassium and b boron methoxy diisopropyl caffeinyl boron respectively after treatment of the resultant eight complex with bf3 thare the boron methoxy diisopropyl caffeinyl borons are prepared by reacting minus diisopropyl caffeinyl borate derived from alpha pinein or diisopropyl caffeinyl borin derived from minus alpha pinein with methanol so here the starting material is same cis2 butene and after n butyl potassium tartaric butoxide you get this one and after that you have to use the chiral boron reagent so this is derived from the uh, iso alpha pinein and alpha pinein hydroboration followed by treatment with methanol so this you can get from alpha pinein that hydroboration hydroboration you get this after that methanol you get this metha methoxy compound uh, after that this can be reacted with the methoxy compound and you get this eight complex here the boron is coordinated with four so it has a negative charge and after bf3 ether treatment that methoxy group can be removed and you get now chiral cotyl group containing boron so here the chiral cotyl group is present and this is the z z geometry similarly from the trans you can get the trans geometry reaction of the z cotyl diisopropyl caffeinyl boron derived from plus alpha pinein with aldehydes at minus 78 degree centigrade followed by oxidative work of furnishes the corresponding syn beta methyl homoallyl alcohols Use of Z cotyl diisopropyl caffeinyl borate derived from minus alpha pinein also produces syn alcohols with 99 percent diastro selectivity, but with opposite enantio selectivity. And this is an example of reagent control. So reagent control. So if you change the reagent, then you get different product. So here, with Z system, with Z chiral Z cotyl system. you get this homoallylation and homoallylic alcohols homoallylic alcohols with rcho minus 78 degree centigrade and this reaction can be used with aliphatic aldehyde as well as aromatic aliphatic and aromatic and when you use the plus alpha pinein then you get 95% so they are enantiomeric relation enantio maric or dlpr and with plus alpha pinein you get only this enantiomer major 95% so 90% ee and diastro selectivity 99% and enantio selectivity which minus alpha pinein then you get the other enantiomer 96% 4% so 92% ee so these are very useful that you get not only diastro selective but also enantio selective when you use this isopheno caffeinyl cotyl boron system similarly from the e system and e cotyl diisopheno caffeinyl boron from alpha pinein you can generate and aldehyde gives anti alcohol products 95% enantio selectivity and minus alpha pinein with aldehyde the enantiomeric anti alcohols also with 95% enantio selectivity so this is the 
ई कोटाइल ई कोटाइल कायराल बोरोन कंपाउंड and this one when treated with aldehyde minus 78 followed by oxidation you get these two enantiomer and here also the reaction is dried the aliphatic aromatic and when plus alpha amine is used this alcohol is major so this alcohol geometry is same for both cases z and e when it is treated with plus alpha pine in system the alpha pine is derived boron compound then 95 percent this one 5 percent this so 90 percent e and when minus alpha pine in this is the major 96 percent 4 percent and you get 92 percent e now we will discuss suzuki reaction so suzuki reaction is an organic reaction classified as a cross coupling reaction where the coupling partners are a boronic acid and an organohalide catalyzed by a palladium complex. So, this is palladium catalyzed reaction, but also we will see nickel also can be used. It was first published in 1979 by Akira Suzuki and he shared the 2001 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Richard e. F. Heck and E. Ichi Negesi for their effort for discovery and development of palladium catalyzed cross coupling in organic synthesis. It is widely used to synthesize polyolefins, styrins, and substituted biphenyls. General scheme for the Suzuki reaction is shown below, where a carbon carbon single bond is formed by coupling of an organoboron species R1BY2 with halide R2X using a palladium catalyst and base. So, this R1BY2 and R2X, this can be both aryl, vinyl, even alkyl and this generally is the aryl and vinyl system. Then you get this R1, R2 single bond is forming and in Suzuki reaction the base is required. Without base no reaction. So, base is very much required and we will see in the mechanism there is a chemical reviews also and the, in the mechanism the palladium 0 is the active catalyst here and here ligand can be there neutral ligand you can put and first it will react with the alkyl halide r 2 x oxidative addition will happen and you get this intermediate palladium 0 become palladium 2 now oxidative addition and this is the rate determining step RDS. After that the strong base is there which displays X minus. So, NAX is formed and the O tertiary butoxide come with palladium now. After that what will happen the boronic acid derivative also reacting with sodium tertiary butoxide. So, base has two role one is the displacement of X here to make this species and also to make the boron tetra coordinate. So, then only after boron has a negative charge then only this R 1 group will migrate to palladium and that is called transmetallation. So, palladium gets R 1 and this O tertiary butoxide come to the boron. So, you get this boronate species and finally, reductive elimination will happen. So, after deducting elimination palladium 2 becomes palladium 0 and R 2 R 1 they make a bond and you get this compound this is the product. So, a boronic acid and alkyl halide react in presence of a palladium catalyst and base to generate the. So, reactions of organoborans and the examples are like here if you see this is vinyl iodide and this is aryl boronic acid with 5 mole percent PDC to PPS 3 hole to 2 molar sodium carbonate DME reflux 16 hours you get this product and you, you see this is the cross coupling happened here and this carbamate moiety carbamate is untouched 
also this is you can see this is vinyl bromide and this is alkyl boronic acid here tetrachloride phosphine palladium also catalytic amount and two molar sodium carbonate thf 65 degree centigrade you get this product and as you can see here the olefin geometry is cis and here also the vinyl bromide geometry was cis so the configuration configuration of olefin did not change in the reaction so it is important that both aryl as well as aliphatic boronic acid can be used and you can get cross coupled product now we will see the variation with nickel catalyst so the first nickel catalyzed cross coupling reaction was reported by persek and quarkers in 1995 using aryl misylates and boronic acids the nickel catalyzed suzuki coupling reaction also allowed a number of compounds that did not work or work towards for the palladium catalyzed system so this is very important because wherever palladium catalysis did not work you can use the nickel catalysis even though a higher amount of nickel catalyst was needed for this reaction around 5 mole percent nickel is not as expensive or as precious a metal as palladium the use of nickel catalyst has allowed for electrophiles that proved challenging for the original suzuki coupling using palladium including substrates such as phenol aryl ethers esters phosphates and fluorides so this is a coupling reaction this is metachloro anisole when reacted with phenyl boronic acid with nicl to dppf and butyl lithium is the base so dppf is this is dppf this is a ligand butyl lithium and potassium phosphate both are base here and dioxin 80 degree centigrade you get this product nickel 0 you get 94% yield on the other hand palladium catalyst you get only less than 1% so this is a an usefulness of nickel catalysis because palladium system does not work here also we'll see another example nickel catalyzed amide coupling nickel catalysis can construct cc bonds from amides despite the inherently inner nature of amides as synthons the following methodology can be used to prepare carbon carbon bonds the coupling procedure is mild and tolerant of myriad functional groups including amines ketones heterocycles groups with acidic protons the synthesis of the tubulin binding compound antiporally phthalate agent was carried out using trimethoxy amide and a heterocyclic fragment so this is the boronic acid derivatives boronic acid compound this is the pinacol boronate and this is the amide so this is the amide also a bond group is there and now what happen when you do this nickel cod is the catalyst and this is an immediate zolinium salt si pr this is a structure isopropyl isopropyl is present and here also isopropyl so this imida zolinium imida zolinium salt and with potassium phosphate is the base h2o toluene 50 degree centigrade will get 83 percent yield of this product so what happens this group has lived this is the living group so you get a ketone here so ketone is formed from an amide generally amide group cannot be eliminated so easily but here with this 
nickel catalyst condition you can this amide coupling possible now we will discuss aluminum based reagents in organic synthesis organo aluminum chemistry is the study of compounds containing bonds between carbon and aluminum the behavior of organo aluminum compounds can be understood in terms of the polarity of the cl bond and the high lewis acidity of the three coordinated species the first organo aluminum compound c2h5hol3al2i3 was discovered in 1859 and organo comp aluminum compounds were however little known until the 1950s when carl ziegler and colleagues discovered the direct synthesis of trialkyl aluminum compounds and applied these compounds to catalytic olefin polymerization so carl ziegler he got nobel prize because of this polymerization and here trialkyl aluminum compounds are used organ aluminum compounds generally feature three and four coordinate aluminum centers although higher coordination numbers are observed with inorganic ligands such as fluoride usually four coordinate aluminum prefers to be tetrahedral in contrast to boron aluminum is larger atom and can easily accommodate four carbon ligands so structure and bonding with less bulky alkyl groups dimerization occurs and one of the distinguishing features of alkyl bridge is the small aluminum c aluminum angle which is 75 degree so with less bulky alkyl groups the dimerization will happen that we will see the tri organo aluminum compounds are thus usually dimeric with a pair of bridging alkyl ligands as for example al2 ch3 hol4 mu ch3 so this is the bridging methyl group the three carbon two electron bonds are very weak and tend to dissociate in the pure liquid which increases with increases in the bulkiness of the alkyl group so when the alkyl groups are bulky then you get the monomeric otherwise the dimeric is possible when the organo aluminum compound contain hydride or halide the smaller ligands tend to occupy the bridging sides these are examples suppose here the methyl group is bridging here methyl group is bridging and here chloride is bridging here the angle is 75 here 91 degree and when this mesethyl group is present so these are mesethyl groups they are bulky then the monomeric so here monomer is stable because monomer is stable because dimerization is not possible because of the bulkiness of the substituent here mesethyl group is present ligand exchange in trialkyl aluminum compounds the trialkyl aluminum dimers often participate in dynamic equilibria resulting in the interchange of bridging and terminal ligands as well as ligand exchange between dimers even in non coordinating solvents aluminum methane exchange is fast as confirmed by proton nmr spectroscopy so by proton nmr one h nmr you can determine that how many kinds of methyl groups is present for example at minus 25 degree centigrade the 1h nmr spectra of me6l2 comprises two signals in 1 is to 2 ratio as expected from the solid state structure so this tells that the equilibrium is not happening so equilibrium does not happen that's why it is showing in the nmr spectra on the other hand at 20 degree centigrade only one signal is observed because exchange of terminal and bridging methyl groups is too fast to be resolved by nmr so at higher temperature the equilibrium is happening now low valent organo aluminum compounds the first organo aluminum compound with aluminum aluminum bond was reported in 1988 as me3si hol2 ch hol2 aluminum hol2 so here aluminum aluminum is there now ch si me3 si me3 similarly here ch si me3 si me3 so here aluminum aluminum bond is present and this was the are uh, discovered in 1988 they are typically prepared by reduction of the dialkyl aluminum chloride by metallic potassium like here r2al cl hol2 plus 2 potassium you get r2al al r2 so this is the aluminum aluminum bond plus 2 kcl this was reported in advanced organometallic chemistry 
Synthesis from alkyl halides and aluminium. Industrially, simple aluminium alkyls of the type L2R6, R is equal to methyl ethyl, are prepared in a two step process beginning with the alkylation of aluminium powder. So, aluminium powder you can react with alkyl chloride and then you get this intermediate CH3CH2 whole 3 Al2 Cl3 and the reaction re resembles with the synthesis of Gignard reagent. Now, this product is called ethyl aluminum sesquichloride. The term sesquichloride refers to the fact that on average the Cl is to aluminum ratio 1.5. Suppose you have 3 chlorine, 2 aluminum, so the ratio is 1.5. These sesquic chlorides can be converted to the Thai organo aluminum derivatives by reduction. So, this intermediate, if you react with sodium, then you get this dimeric aluminum compound plus 2L, so this is dimeric 2L plus 6 NaCl. So, what I, this procedure tells that first you have to react with an alkyl halide and then this intermediate can be reacted with sodium. Then you get this alkylated aluminum compound. This method is used for the production of trimethyl aluminum and triethyl aluminum. This is the review uh, aluminum compounds organic in Ullman's Encyclopedia of Industrial Chemistry 2005. Synthesis, some more synthesis that hydroaluminium aluminum powder reacts directly with certain terminal alkenes in the presence of hydrogen. The process consists of two steps. So, here first producing dialkyl aluminum hydride, such reactions are typically conducted at elevated temperature. So, here an aluminium in presence of hydrogen is reacted with an olefin and then you get this one HALCH2Cr2 whole 3. So, here a aluminum hydride is present and now if you react for non-valic alkyl groups the organic aluminum hydrides are typically trimeric. So, if R group is not bulky then you can get another addition. In a subsequent step these hydrides are treated with more alkene to effect hydroalumination. So, this hydride HALCH2Cr uh, this one can be reacted with further olefin you get this species. So, there the three alkyl groups are coordinated to aluminum. Diisobutyl aluminum hydride which is dimeric is prepared by hydride elimination from triisobutyl aluminum. So, triisobutyl aluminum can goes to this hydride species and this olefin is generated. This is the isobutene. Carboalumination, organ aluminum compounds can react with alkenes and alkynes resulting in the net addition of one organyl group and the metal fragment across the multiple bond, carboalumination. This process can proceed in a purely thermal manner or in the presence of transition metal catalyst. For the uncatalyzed process, mono addition is only possible when the alkene is substituted. Like here, uh, the olefin with N octyl group that is one decin, when it is treated with this one triethyl aluminum 10 mole percent zirconium Cp2Cl2, you get this product as the major. So, here what happened? The AlEt2 and hydrogen has been added. This is the major product. This case, when this catalyst is used, then you get this intermediate with the ethyl group. So, this ethyl group is added now, ethyl and diethyl aluminum here. Here hydrogen diethyl aluminum with this catalyst ethyl diethyl aluminum and after oxygen treatment you get, get this alcohol with the ethyl group incorporated. <laughs> Further, if you have a more olefin then this species, this species can react like this way and you get this olefin. So, ethyl group contain olefin can be also obtained if you have an excess olefin. Carboalumination with alkynes also is possible 
the zirconium catalyzed methyl alumination of alkynes JMA reaction involves one step skin addition of a MEJR bond to one alkynes in an anti-marconic manner followed by zirconium to aluminum transmetallation on the resultant carbon group. Like here, the ME3L cat catalytic Cp2Z or Cl2 and methane and aluminum 2, so this is the syn addition. So, all alkynes, this is terminal alkynes, uh, terminal alkynes. The addition will be seen. Mechanism, this is the me mechanism that ME3L react with Cp2Z or Cl2 to generate this. There is a methyl bridge, now chloro chloro bridge and methyl is connected to zirconium. So, now this terminal alkyne will be coordinated with zirconium and now this methyl group will go here and because the there is a negative charge that will be stable at the terminal carbon. So, that carbon will coordinate with zirconium and after that this um, exchange will happen the carbon will bound to the aluminum species now and you get this one plus Cp2 Z or Cl2. This is what published in JAX. In the laboratory, simple members are commercially available at low cost. Many methods have been developed for their synthesis in the laboratory, including metathesis or transmetallation. Metathesis of aluminum trichloride with RLI or RMGS gives the trialkyl aluminum. This is AlCl3 plus 3 N butyl, Bu3Al plus 3 lithium chloride. Transmetallation also is possible 2 aluminum plus 3 Hg pH to 2 LPH3 plus 3 Hg. This is the transmetallation and this is the aluminum chloride with N butyl lithium reaction. Now we will discuss different reactions of organo aluminum. First we will discuss reactions of alkenyl alanes. Treatment of alkenyl aluminates with halogen electrophiles such as n bomosuccinamide and iodine leads to the formation of halogenated olefins. These products are useful for cross coupling reactions. Like here, this terminal alkyne when treated with dibalage, you get this alkenyl alkylnine aluminum compound. So, here you can get very easily alkynyl aluminum compound and this alkynyl aluminum when reacted with n bomosuccinamide is the NBS. You get this alkynyl bromide. So, here this actually has a nucleophile and you get a reaction the bromo bromine comes and with iodine THF you get the alkynyl iodine. So, these are very useful reaction that from a alkyne you can get the uh, alkynyl bromide or iodide. This was published in this journal. More reactions of alkynyl alanes, zirconium catalyzed carboalumination of alkynes by trimethyl alanes is a convenient method for accessing substituted alkynyl alanes stereoselectively upon exposure to aldehydes and ketones alkynyl alanes form secondary or tertiary allylic alcohols. Formaldehyde is a useful reagent in this context for the introduction of a hydroxymethyl unit. So, this is an reaction the of alkynyl alanes. So, in situ the alkynyl alan is generated alkynyl alanes is generated. How? First this trimethyl aluminum Cp2 Z or Cl2 you get this syn addition then N butyl lithium that is the metal transmetallation the lithium will come then the hydroxymethylation with paraformaldehyde you get this one. And here methyl and CH2OH group are seen. So, they are seen same side. This was published in JOC 1980. So, what is the mechanism of this reaction? So, trimethyl aluminum first reacts with Cp2Z or Cl2 we have seen like this. 
the methyl bridge, then the chloro bridge. Now, this addition reaction will happen. First, the coordination of the terminal alkyne with this zirconium, and after that, this methyl will come, zr, and after that, aluminum will be coordinated, and after that, butyl lithium, okay, this will be a catalyst will be regenerated and after that n butyl lithium so here n butyl lithium is added first the butyl group will coordinate with the aluminum and after that lithium will come so this is the vinyl lithium species so this is important that the vinyl aluminum so this is vinyl or alkynyl aluminum vinyl aluminum is converted to vinyl lithium and after that hydroxymethylation will happen with paraformaldehyde. So, this is paraformaldehyde. The hydroxymethylation will happen and you get this one MECH2H on the same side of the double bond. Alkynyl alanes, alkynyl and alkynyl alanes add in conjugate fashion to enones in the S trans conformation without nucleophilic activation. Enones locked in S cis conformation such as cyclohexenone are unreactive. The coordination of oxygen to aluminum is believed to be necessary for this reaction. So, here this oxygen is coordinated to a aluminum. And that is why without catalyst you can get the conjugate addition. So, here this is in the S trans conformation and the S trans conformation only this reaction will happen and this group alkynyl group is adding to the alpha beta unsaturated ketone and this is the 1 4 addition. This is a published in this journal. When alkynes and dialkyl alanes are combined in a 2 is to 1 ratio, 1 3 dienes result. The aluminum carbon bond of the initially formed alkynyl alane adds across a second molecule of the alkyne, forming a conjugated dienyl alane. Photonalysis provides the metal free diene product. So, this is the first reaction, this is the alkynyl aluminum. And this is the alkyne and this is in 2 equivalent. Then this addition will happen, this adds to here and aluminum be coordinate to this carbon now and this is you can see the syn addition, 2 ethyl group are the same side. So, syn addition is happening and after that if you do the protonolysis with aqueous acid then you get the H here and this diene is formed in 75 percent yield. This was published in JAX 1968. Reactions of the alkyne alanes, alkynyl and alkylene alanes undergo transmetallation to a variety of metals including boron, zirconium and mercury. Transmetallation, here this is the uh, BBN, BBN derivative, BBNO methoxy compound. So, this is the bulky boron compound and this does a transmetallation. Now, alkynyl boron compound is formed and after n butyl lithium iodine you get this one. So, what happens n butyl lithium adds here and now boron becomes and now somehow this with iodine you can get this addition at the vinyl species you get the uh, substituted olefin. So, here substituted here disubstituted olefin is forming and it it was mono substituted. So, this is the reaction that mono substituted uh, of course, with uh, aluminum you can get the vinyl aluminum you can generate and then you can bring an alkyl groups in butyl. This is the strategy that first you treat with the boron BBN O methoxy compound you get this one and after that in butyl lithium iodine you get this. This is a published in tetradon letters. 
Alkynyl alanes, now we will discuss alkynyl alanes are primarily used in place of the corresponding alkali metal acetylides when the latter reagents are ineffective the coupling of an acetylide and tarsal alkyl halide is an example of a reaction that cannot be accomplished with the alkali metal acetylides which displace halide in an SN2 fashion the corresponding alkynyl alanes are able to couple to tertiary halides by SN1 mechanism, SN1 like mechanism. So, here this alkynyl lithium you can treat the aluminum chloride to generate this trialkyl aluminum this is the laboratory preparation aluminum chloride uh, lithium species can generate the trialkyl aluminum. Now, you treat with this one you get this. So, this is the SN1 type reaction because we know that SN2 reaction does not happen on quaternary uh, system. Tertiary alkyl chlorides and bromides as well as secondary alkyl sulfonates as for example, missiles react readily whereas secondary alkyl chlorides and bromides as well as primary alkyl halides and sulfonate do not. So, this is an evidence, evidence for S1 reaction because secondary alkyl chloride and bromide as well as primary alkyl halides and sulfonate do not do the reaction. So, these are the possible mechanism that uh, carbocation is formed. So, carbocation is formed first from this species halide and now this will be this C L minus will be here. So, the aluminum is tetra coordinated now and first the alpha attack is possible alpha attack concerted. So, this is the alpha attack carbon is connected to the R. R. So, this is the bond is forming and this bond is weakened. So, this is the alpha attack concerted. Now, alpha attack addition elimination is also possible that here R is adding to this terminal carbon or as well as the aluminum and here a carbocation is formed here carbon got a positive charge and after that this elimination you get this alkyne. Alternatively beta attack is also possible the addition elimination. So, beta attack this is the beta carbon here the R is added here the carbocation. Now, the migration will happen one to migration of R group also with the triple bond formation that uh, this group will eliminate then you get the alkyne. So, these are the possible mechanisms, but the important thing is that this acts as a SN1 fashion and with this uh, tertiary or quaternary chloride you can get this product tertiary alkyl halide this is a Jax 1975 1977385. Methylation of enols it was expected that for static region MeL X2 compounds would be more regioselective than Me2L X compounds or Me3L and the regioselectivity of the addition would increase as the steric requirement of the X group increases iodide greater than bromide greater than chloride. So, this is the reaction conjugate reaction and if you add this methyl aluminum species methyl aluminum species then you can get this 1 4 1 4 addition and this is the 1 2 addition both case on methyl group is coming. Now, we can see that we define methylating aluminum compounds you can get different products. So, LME 3 when ME 3 benzene you get this product 1 2 100 percent this is 93 7 is to 93 when Me 2 L C L is there. So, this is getting reduced now because a methyl group is replaced by chlorine. So, bulkiness has increased. Me 2 L B R you get 20 is to 8 you get 57 percent yield also decrease and Me 2 L I this is the bulky group now you get 99 percent of this one. So, this is totally opposite now however trimethyl aluminum this was the so this selectively gives one four addition product. So, this is very important that when the bulkiness increases. So, bulkiness favors one four addition this is published in JOC 
addition to alpha beta unsaturated ketones now the aluminum isobutyl is there so isobutyl group when is present then you can get here the hydride addition this is very important the hydride here conjugate because this is now disubstituted so conjugate addition is not possible one to addition only but one to addition in one case it is the hydride minus and another case the isobutyl group and it has been found when you increase the equivalent of this one with two equivalent you get 76 percent of this one butyl group added on the other hand in ether you get 96 percent of this one this is the hydride addition now how the hydride is coming if you see the structure of isobutyl group so this hydride this hydrogen acting as a hydride and will give this product and ether only this one to hydride addition is happening so what could be the possible mechanism so our triisobutyl aluminum makes this intermediate and this is the hydride addition is happening you can see this hydride is going to the activated carbonyl compound and you get this uh, one to addition and you get this alcohol so this is one to hydride addition and this is preferable in ether alternatively if you have a more equivalent of triisobutyl aluminum then a this one this aluminum isobutyl negative will cause react with this another equivalent and then the isobutyl group will add to the carbonyl so this is also 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 uh, atoms are present and now you get this isobutyl group and after that this product hydrolysis gives product so this is 1 2 alkyl addition and this is prefers in prefers in excess l isobutyl in pentane now nickel catalysis if you put in the system what happened nickel catalysis reaction in the presence of small amount of nime SL2, the reactions between alpha beta unsaturated ketones and tri isobutyl aluminum carried out in pentane occur much more rapidly and with increased selectivity for conjugate reduction of the substrate producing the corresponding saturated ketone. So, in presence of nickel, what happens? And this is the hydride reduction and also 1 4, this is the another product, 1 4 a hydride addition is also forming and the missile is this one this is nickel methyl 2. So, in pentane you get 73 percent yield of this 1 4 addition. So, this we will discuss however, in ether you get only this product as the major the hydride addition, but in pentane you get this 1 4 addition. So, this mechanism we will see this first react with nickel and you get this isobutyl nickel ln. Now, isobutane will eliminate and this is formed the active hydride species. Now, ln nickel hydride reacts with this carbonyl compound and you can see this conjugate addition is happening conjugate 1 for addition of hydride and you get this this can be equal with this. Now, this is coming displace this nickel with aluminum and after that you get this enolate also hydrolysis gives the ketone. So, this is the uh, product here 1 4 hydride addition product. So, this is the 
special about nickel when you put the nickel catalyst then the one for hydride addition is possible some miscellaneous example here the cyclic enones has been employed here alkanine aluminium can be reacted and this kind of system here this alkanyl aluminum we react and you can get some product here oh group already earlier there and this products are formed in dr2 is to 1 ratio also vinyl aluminum uh, followed by acetic acid treatment you can get this so this is the trans product is forming and that is the most stable here this groups are trans and if you treat with methyl lithium then the alkenyl so earlier we have seen alkenyl does not add to cyclic olefins but lithium lithium exchange facilitates addition you get this here also the trans product is formed so alkenyl group is coming also here another alkenyl group uh, with methyl lithium an acidic acid treatment you can get this compound the hydrolysis of the ester is happening and you get the carboxylic acid derivative and you get this similar compound here the hydroxide group is there earlier from earlier so only thing is common that the trans geometry is forming in each case and this is another example of epoxide opening epoxide opening with this uh, aluminum species you get 3.3 is to 1 so this is the major so the opening is happening from this side on the other hand if you use this one the lithium m2l then you get this product that is the attack from this side so this is a b so a in a case attack from this side and this is the b case also if you treat this one allylic lithium species with triethyl aluminum you get this allyl aluminum compound and that this is coming from the aldehyde this is the mom and you get this with the terminal double bond after that hcl methanol you can get this acetal formation and after that you can reduce uh, with dimide you can reduce the double bond to get the extra brevi comin this was published in geoc 1984 so today we have seen first boron asymmetric allylation and asymmetric cotylation so asymmetric allylation we have seen the different chiral auxiliary can be employed and ipc to b allyl which is commercially available is most useful and also it has been used the, uh, in nicolo synthesis where the double bond can be cleaved with ozonolysis and that is the two carbon homologation also cotyl boration we have seen that with isopeno campanile boron cotyl system you can get high diastere isolation enhanced selectivity because it takes the uh, six member cyclic transition state and in z geometry we have seen the methyl takes an axial position and with uh, e system methyl takes the equatorial position so you can get with z you can get the syn and with e system you can get the anti products and this products are forming high enantiomer selectivity up to 94% e as well as high diastere selectivity up to 99% then we have seen the aluminum reagents in organic synthesis and aluminum can be prepared in very ways from reaction with alkyl halide suppose first reaction with aluminum alkyl halide then you get chloro compound chloro di alkyl aluminum and that can be reacted with sodium so to get a tri alkyl aluminum also we have seen from olefin hydroalumination we have seen that through hydroalumination also you can do so uh, aluminum reacted with hydrogen and an olefin generate the uh, hydrated aluminum dialkyl species then can be reacted to with further olefin to generate the trialkyl aluminum also carbo uh, annulation we have alumination we have seen and the aluminum can be formed in this way and lastly we have seen the general synthesis 
with uh, aluminum chloride and n-butyl lithium, alkyl lithium, it, it can generate the alkyl aluminum compound. Also, with transmetallation, like mercury compound can give the uh, phenyl or alkyl groups to aluminum and in this way, you can generate the alkyl compound. So, next we have seen the reactions of, uh, first we have seen that uh, transmetallation, the alkynyl aluminum can be reacted with BBN O methoxy to give the boron compound. Also, if it is reacted with alkylation, that uh, then you can get uh, also the double bond can be more substituted. And then we have seen the conjugate addition and we have seen that if you increase the bulkiness of the aluminum iodide, then the one for addition is facile. So, methyl group with trimethyl aluminum, it gives only one to addition product. On the other hand, dimethyl aluminum iodide, it gives the one for addition product. So, steriness increases the one for addition. Also, we have seen that without nickel catalyst with isobutyl system, we have seen that it can give the hydride as a donor also and you can get the two products, one to addition products only. But with nickel system, we have seen the when nickel is added, then the hydride addition product is the major product. I hope you have enjoyed the course. Thank you.